Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to teach you basic digital illustration. Now the process that I'm about to show you can be applied regardless of the tablet or pen display you are using. So let me just start by saying that if you are drawing on the tablet, I highly recommend you get some sort of tablet or laptop stand that can actually elevate your tablet so that it's better for your position. If the tablet is too low, for example, I have this tablet stand here. This is actually a nice stand because it allows me to deploy the tablet at different angles, but this is just too low. So when I am drawing with the tablet here, I need to hunch down and that's not good for posture. So if you intend to work on your tablet or on your pen display for long periods of time, I highly recommend you get something that can um, elevate um, your drawing device. The tablet I'm using here is the iPad Pro and this is the Apple Pencil which supports pressure and tilt sensitivity. So this stylus allows me to draw thin and thick lines. Not all stylus will support pressure and tilt sensitivity. And this app that I'm using, this is Procreate. You can use any digital drawing app. Most of the process and the workflow um, is going to be very similar. For this tutorial, we are going to be drawing flowers. You can download the reference photo from the video description below or you can just go online and look for any photos of flowers. Just uh, make sure that there are shadow details on the flower petals because we are going to be drawing some shadows later on. And the main reason why we are drawing flowers is because we don't have to be that caught up with getting the details, the accuracy, because uh, in this tutorial, I want to show you guys the potential of digital illustration, what you can do, the basic features, uh, rather than being too caught up with like getting the accuracy down. All right, let's start by creating a new canvas. So I'm going to go into gallery to click this plus icon to create a new canvas. It doesn't really matter what resolution you are using. I do recommend uh, maybe 2000 by 1005 or 3000 by 2000 pixels so that you get a high resolution file. So let's pick a color. I'm going to pick black and let's pick a brush. Now in Procreate, I like this brush called Tinder Box, but um, it doesn't really matter which brush you pick. Right, so let's start very quickly by drawing onto the canvas. So I'm drawing the middle part of the flower and I'm going to draw some flower petals. Now when drawing, take note of overlapping elements. So I'm going to draw the petals that are on top of other petals first. And then I can draw the petals that are beneath. So with the Apple Pencil, I can press down harder to get thicker lines. I'm not exactly following the reference photo, by the way. So I'm just using the reference photo as a quick uh, reference, a quick guide. So make sure you have some overlapping elements. So for example, here I have this flower petal that is behind these two and one here and maybe another one here i can also draw another one here just a small one okay let's take a look at the layers palette now um, with digital illustration we are going to be working with layers so we have drawn on the first layer here so let's just rename this as our flower just so that later on when we have many layers we know which layer we are referring to so now that we have this let's color it to color let's create another layer a color layer let's just rename it um, color or flower color so for this flower let's just uh, paint it yellow so i'm going to go into the color palette here and choose a yellow color now you may see this in which case um, you can just choose the yellow by moving the selector around so just choose any yellow now if you're using some other software um, 
now is the time to choose the paint bucket tool. So the paint bucket tool in Procreate is this drag the color here and then place it on top. Notice that it fills the whole screen with yellow. This is what I do not want. So let me just undo. To undo in Procreate, you can use the double finger tab or you can click on this undo button here. Um, the gesture, the finger gesture for undo is different depending on the software you use. So what happened here is the paint bucket filled everything because it failed to take into account the line art here. So with Procreate, you need to tap on the flower layer and tap here reference so that we can use this layer as a reference. And now before you color it, tap on the color layer first so that we can color on this layer and not on the flower layer. With digital illustration, it is important to put the right elements on the right layer. So I have line art on its own layer and colors on its own layer because uh, later on you can see that we will be able to change the colors uh, very easily if we need to change colors or anything. Okay, so now that we have set the line art as a reference layer, we can just drag the color here onto the flower. Now notice as I drag here again, it tries to fill up the whole thing. And the reason for that is because the color, the paint bucket will fill enclosed area. And for this flower petal, you can see this area here, it's not enclosed. So to fill this up properly, we need to close up the area here. So let me go into the flower layer again and choose the brush again, same brush, same color, and touch up this area, sorry, touch up this area. Basically try to close up all the lines. So if you want to use paint bucket when you're drawing, try to close up all the lines. So here there seems to be a little opening. Let's close up this as well, just in case. Okay, let's go back to the color layer and pick the same color again. And now you can see the paint bucket, it works perfectly. You can of course uh, go in and color the flower like this. Uh, and it's gonna take more time. And notice when I'm coloring, I'm actually coloring over the line art, uh, which is what I do not want. But since this color layer, since the color is on its own layer, I can actually move this layer down below the line art. So now you can see the line art is above the colors. The alternative is to, um, let's move this up again. The alternative to moving the layers around is to change the blending mode. So here I can change the blending mode from normal to multiply, and this will take into account the line art and sort of multiply the colors together. And you can see it looks as if the black is on top of the yellow now. Okay, so let's continue to color this. So for this, I can just color it like this, doesn't really matter. So I've just colored the other flower as well. So the next step I want to do is to add some details. I want to add some light and shadows. So I'm going to create a new layer for the shadows. And I'm going to select a light gray color or a light neutralized color. And I'm going to paint the shadow area. So this flower petal, it's behind this one. So let's paint some shadows. Oops, uh, notice I painted over the line and this color doesn't seem like a shadow color. So again, we can go into the layer and change the blending mode to multiply. So now it's taking into account the color that is beneath. So we can add shadows like this. We can also draw some details on the flower petal. So when we have the 
shadow layer on its own later on if we don't want the shadow we can actually just turn it off so we can add some shadows really quickly like this now that we have some shadows, maybe we want to add some highlights as well. So for the highlights, um, usually for me, I would just paint the highlights onto the color layer rather than create a separate layer for the highlights. Because sometimes when there are too many layers, it can be a bit overwhelming to scroll through the layers to find the right layer that you want to work on. So um, in this case, I'm going to choose um, yellow, but I'm going to choose a lighter yellow. So you can use the eyedropper too. You can click here for the eyedropper too. In many other drawing apps, the eyedropper too basically looks like an eyedropper. Or you can use the shortcut here, which is to tap and hold onto a color, and this will select the same color. And go into the color palette and just click on a lighter color. So let's paint some highlights here. So this doesn't look right. I'm going to select again and change. All right, so now it looks good. Okay, make sure that when you're painting, you're not painting over the shadow areas because um, highlights and shadows, they should be separate. If you paint on top of the shadow area, it's going to look kind of weird. So I'm just adding some details. I can also make the highlight even whiter or lighter. Okay, so this is pretty much done. Now we just need to add some background and leaves. So for the background, I'm going to create um, a layer for the background color. So let's just rename this color as, uh, sorry, rename this layer as background color. And since this is the background, I'm going to drag it right to the bottom. And I'm going to fill the background with this green color. Okay, this is nice. So for the flower, I drew the outline with black ink. For the background, for the leaves, I'm going to draw the leaves with a green outline. So for the leaves, I'm going to draw the leaves above the background. So I want to create a new layer for the leaves. And I'm going to draw with darker color. So let's pick the same brush again and just draw some leaves. Again, uh, it doesn't have to be exactly the same as the photo you see. So when you're drawing, try to vary the line uh, thickness, which will make your drawing look more interesting. So sometimes have the lines be very thick and sometimes very thin. Now, when it comes to drawing something like this, when there are when there are foreground and background elements, sometimes you may want to draw the background elements with thinner lines because objects that are further away, they should look smaller. So the lines should also be smaller or thinner. So these are the leaves that are drawn with darker lines. To switch things up a bit, I can draw leaves with um, lighter color as well. So just mix and match and it's going to make your sketch look more interesting. I can also have this uh, white or lighter leaf here. And I can also draw um, the veins of the leaf with this color. So with digital art, it's all about experimentation. It's very fun because if you don't like what you see, you can change. Uh, you can change the color, you can change the design later on because everything is digital. It allows you to change. And I'm going to pick this darker color to draw the veins for this. And I can draw the veins for this and here. 
So with the background added, now this sketch is starting to come to life. Okay, so maybe um, let's color the leaves. So to color the leaves, I'm going to create another layer. Uh, but before that, let's rename the layer with the leaves as our leaves line art. And then the new layer will be called leaves color. So I'm going to drag leaves color below the line art because I want to cut I want the colors to be below the line art. And let's um, paint with some green color. Let's choose a darker green here, for example. Okay, let's see if we can use the leaves line art as a reference layer and drag this. Okay, it doesn't work because um, the leaves line art, let me just show you what is happening here. You can see these are the leaves and all these elements, they are not closed up, which is why when I use the paint bucket, it's just going to spread everywhere. The paint bucket only works for enclosed areas like this, for example. So if I drag this here, it should work, but not here. So let's um, turn everything back on again. So for example, with this leaf, I'm going to have it white. So we have dark against white. And for some of the leaves, it will be um, without any details. Some of the leaves will have details, some don't have details. Some will be white against dark, some will be dark against light. If you accidentally color out of the outline, just pick the eraser tool and just erase those uh, unwanted areas. So I've just added colors to the leaves. Now with digital art, the nice thing is um, you can try different variations. So for example, if you don't like the leaves, you can just remove the leaves. Or if you want to try like different um, types of leaves, you can also draw them on a new layer and switch things around. It's very easy. And if you want to change colors, it's also very easy. So for example, this flower here in the background, maybe I want it to be red. So I can paint this red, just go to the color layer for the flower, pick a red color, something that's very bright and I can just replace the color very easily. Now Procreate has this feature where you can lock the pixels so I can use two fingers and swipe the layer. So now when I color outside of this uh, yellow area, you can see only the yellow area is affected even though I'm coloring like outside. So this makes uh, changing um, colors or filling colors within another color very easily. So for example, if I want to paint some uh, details, I can just do this. And I don't have to worry about the colors flowing out of the red color. Digital art is convenient because it allows you to make changes very easily. So for example, here, the veins for this leaf, uh, it's not that obvious. So I'm going to have to erase the veins here. I've just selected the layer with the veins. And now I want to draw uh, veins that are much lighter. So let's pick a much lighter color. Yeah, so now you can see it looks much better because the contrast is better. Perhaps I need to add some shadows to the leaves as well because the leaves are below the flower. So I'm going to create another layer. The blending mode will be multiply and I'm going to choose the shadow color again and just paint some shadows onto the leaves. 
By the way, with Procreate, you can actually uh, quickly just um, have the art fill the canvas by doing this motion, double finger and just pinch and zoom, and it will fill the canvas very quickly. So this is the gist of digital illustration, basically uh, work in layers as much as possible. So I always have layers for line art, and layers for colors, layers for shadows, and layers for details, for like little specks and dots for texture. So I have layers for like everything. So for this particular um, artwork, I have about maybe eight layers, which is actually not a lot. When you draw like very complex scenes where there are a lot of elements, sometimes it's good to have layers because you will be able to like target specific element that you're drawing in case you need to change colors or in case you need to remove the element you can just quickly just uncheck uncheck the layer and it will make the layer invisible so this is basic digital illustration for beginners if you have any questions uh, do let me know in the comment section below digital illustration it's very fun and you can learn a lot so let me just change this flower back because i kind of like the yellow flower